Hello everyone and welcome to another Packard video. Today we are going to discuss how to refurbish the radio vibrator. The radio in this video is the push button radio out of a 1955 Packard clipper. However, this process surely is very similar to uh, pretty much any vacuum tube powered car radio uh, of the day. The reason why you might need to refurbish your radio vibrator is it's one of the causes of the uh, radio not working. If you buy a car or maybe you just uh, have a car that you've never fixed the radio in, um, the symptoms of the radio vibrator not working is if you turn the uh, radio on and you should be able to see if the radio is getting power because the light inside the radio uh, will light up. However, the radio won't make any noise at all. Uh, if the vibrator is working, you'll hear it make this kind of buzzing, you know, vibrating noise. But uh, if it's not working, then just nothing will happen. And on top of not hearing the vibrator working because it's, it's not working, the uh, vibrator working is essential to having the rest of the radio work. So you won't have any sound output either, which brings us into the next topic of, of what the vibrator is even for and why it's so important. For the amplification circuitry in the radio to work properly, they require a high level of voltage. Uh, for example, this radio uses 250 volts DC in the amplification circuitry. Of course, this is roughly 20 times higher than the uh, 12 to 14 volts in the car's electrical system. So how can we uh, boost the 12 to 14 volts DC into 250 volts DC? Well, we can use a transformer, but there's one problem, which is that the transformers uh, only work with AC power, not with DC. The reason is because um, the uh, mechanism of how a transformer works is you have a coupled inductance between two windings. So you'll have one winding, and as current flows through it, uh, it creates a uh, magnetic field and uh, that mag magnetic field induces current in the other winding and depending on the ratio of the windings essentially the um, well the number of uh, coils in each you will have a, a higher voltage and lower current or vice versa induced in the uh, secondary winding compared to the first however this uh, property only works as the uh, voltage is increasing or decreasing. When you have a uh, constant voltage, then there is no uh, current induced in the other winding. So you have to have uh, alternating, uh, constantly alternating current for the transformer to work properly. And if you have direct current, then it won't work at all. So how the uh, radio vibrator works, as you can see in this schematic, um, the uh, bottom uh, left corner there where there's that black dot to the left of L8, that's our power coming in. And it goes to the center chap on the primary side of the transformer. That's it's labeled T1, the left side is the primary side. And uh, how our vibrator works is uh, when, when the radio was first switched on, we were getting our battery voltage, let's say 13 volts. Uh, going to both sides of the vibrator. The vibrator is on the left, labeled M1. The vibrator, once it starts to get power and it goes into action, will alternately short out to ground uh, either side of the two terminals. What this does is be it establishes a current path uh, through half of the transformer winding, like from the center tap to the lower or from the center tap to the upper, alternately. So this is how we end up with the alternating current in the transformer. And then the uh, C17 capacitor there is there both to smooth out the waveform and also to reduce the uh, arcing in the vibrator and make the vibrator last longer. Uh, one of the reasons a vibrator can go bad is because the capacitors wear out over time. Well, they don't really wear out, they just age. Uh, they, they, they just um, get worse from age, uh, not necessarily from use. So uh, if the radio has the original capacitors and you turn it on like 50 or 70 years later or whatever, um, then you could be wearing out your vibrator much faster than it otherwise would be. 
or even like 30 or 40 years later. So with this alternating current on the left side of the transformer, we also induce the alternating current on the right side of the transformer. And um, through the circuitry on the right side there, mostly uh, the, the main player is just our rectification tube V7. Um, we put an AC into that, and that essentially just acts as a diode to get DC out. And the capacitors, which are both labeled C1, C1A and C1B, um, hold that DC charge to end up, so we end up with a, a relatively constant 250 volt DC output, uh, which goes to power the, uh, rec with the amplification circuitry and all these things that are not shown in the schematic, because I, I just cropped the schematic to the relevant part here. So, uh, as we can see, our, our uh, vibrator operation is uh, very important <laughs> to uh, the radio working at all. If it, without it, it just won't work. Uh, really, the only thing that will work in the radio is the tube heaters. So you'll turn the radio on and all the tubes that aren't burnt out will uh, look glow because the tube heaters are just powered right off at of 12 volts. They don't go through the vibrator. They don't go through the circuit. But uh, really nothing else will work. So without further ado, how can we, uh, how can we remove and refurbish our vibrator? Well, first you need to remove the radio from the car. If you have a 55 or 56 Packard, I'm putting some instructions in the description. I put a uh, wrote up a very good uh, and detailed uh, instructions on how to uh, remove the radio. And there's also, if you look in the accessory section of the 5556 service manual, uh, it is also uh, in there. But I don't think it's any anything near as uh, as good as my description. So this image here, once you have the radio components out, shows you the location of the vibrator. It's this gray can. And this, keep in mind that this picture shows this apparatus upside down. So when it's in the car, it is upside down and all those tubes point down. Uh, so the vibrator is very well clamped in place uh, to, one, reduce noise because it's vibrating all the time. It should be... Uh, held in place well so it's not rattling around and also to make sure it doesn't fall out so the vibrator is is quite difficult to pull out but it does simply pull straight out you can you know wiggle it a bit or whatever but um, there's there's no tricks it, it just does pull straight up and that's how you get it out you will notice on the vibrator the end of it is crimped so you can just take you know, the metal is pretty soft, so you can just take a screwdriver and some uh, needle nose pliers, things like that, to just peel up the crimps. And then uh, once you uncrimp it all the way around, you'll be able to pull uh, the insides out. On this one, there was a piece of foam uh, kind of formed around the uh, wires, like the wires were pushed through the foam, so I just had to cut the foam. Um, or you can desolder the wires if you're really fancy, but I didn't have my soldering iron with me, so... Um, you know, you can cut the foam, but when you put it back in, the foam will just close back and, and seal it again. So I don't think it's too big, too big of a deal to cut it. So you will notice here, um, if you have your vibrator part, it's, it's not necessarily super clear in this picture. I'll go to the next picture here where it's already disassembled. Um, you can see how there are uh, two pairs of contacts. So there's the uh, middle piece that has a contact on each side and there's uh, two uh, single contacts flanking that middle piece. How the vibrator works is you have the, um, you have the coil there that when this is together, the coil pulls uh, one pulls that middle piece uh, towards the coil and towards one of the contacts. However, when that middle piece touches the outer contact, when either of those contacts touch, it'll short the, the respective contact to ground. And when this happens, it drops the, uh, you know, it cuts out the voltage powering the relay coil. Uh, it doesn't cut the circuit to the relay coil, but it simply grounds what is powering the relay coil. And of course, because the uh, relay coil is connected to ground to complete the circuit, if both sides of it are connected to ground, then nothing happens. So 
uh, by grounding out the contact, it, the relay coil loses power. However, when this happens, uh, the uh, middle piece, because it's been pulled forward by some a bit of a spring action, um, you know, the, the middle piece is flexible. It's sprung forward slightly by the relay in the first place. When that relay power cuts out, it'll spring back and hit the uh, other contact, which will again cut the relay power out. And then when it is uh, in between these two contacts, the relay is on, which helps, you know, because ob obviously the thing's not going to bounce back, back and forth forever. Um, the... Uh, additional uh, power provided you know by the relay to keep pulling the middle piece around uh, keeps the cycle going indefinitely and I do have a, a slow-mo video here I can show you the main thing is that you want to just take this apart by on this one there's two nuts and the pieces are just sandwiched together so they come apart and you don't have to take apart more than you need to you don't have to desolder anything you just want to clean up the contacts nice and good. So I have a uh, before and after here of, or it's not, a, sorry, it's not a before and after. It's cleaning one pair of contacts and then showing the other pair uh, uncleaned. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's only going to, the contacts are only going to touch in one place. So as long as you clean off kind of the high spots, then you're probably good to go. And like I said, I have a slow-mo video at the end here of the uh, vibrator working and then also of the radio working. Well, actually, first I have a before video of the vibrator not working. As you can see, this is how the vibrator starts working. You can see that it pushes towards the uh, one contact. However, when I ohmed out these contacts, the uh, one it's pushing towards was at about 6 ohms of resistance. And uh, the one on the opposite side actually had no continuity whatsoever. It was that burnt up. So, how it's supposed to work is when it touches that one contact, uh, there's a short to ground, as I mentioned before, that depowers the coil. And that middle part should spring back. Um, and as it is springing back, that coil is repowered, which helps it spring back. And then it touches the other contact which shorts the coil out again and it springs back again which turns back on the coil to help it spring back and this cycle repeats until the uh, power is turned off to the radio. In the same vein you can also test your vibrator you will have to disassemble it enough to get the uh, the guts out of it but instead of disassembling those first you can simply gently press that middle part to one contact and then ohm between the long center post, which is ground, and uh, what the respective contact post, and then see what the resistance is. And then ohm between ground and the other contact post and move the middle part to the other contact and then see what the resistance is. The resistance on both of those should be very, very low. Uh, as you saw in mine, even a 6 ohm resistance was far too much for it to work properly. Now, here is a clip of the vibrator working correctly, and you can see what I was talking about. So, regarding reinstallation, first of all, as you saw in mine, my uh, wires, the insulation become quite brittle and was just uh, just flaking off. So, you should, if you want to do it the right way, uh, desolder the wires and put some shrink tube over it. Shrink the shrink tube down, solder the wires back on, and you should be good to go. Or, if you want to be lazy, just throw some electrical tape on each wire over the whole length and it'll be good enough to work. Uh, for reinstallation, uh, because the vibrator is held in so tightly, you don't actually need to crimp the case back down. You can just shove it back in 
and uh, it'll stay in perfectly fine and, and work perfectly fine, which is good if you didn't polish your contacts enough uh, or something like that later and you need to remove it again and fix something, then it's uh, easy as pie because you didn't have to recrimp it. So here is a video of the radio working. Though I should note that the radio uh, still has a, a good amount of work to go, but you can at least hear that there is sound output because the uh, there is power going to the rest of the radio circuitry now with the vibrator working. Well, that about wraps it up. Please be sure to uh, like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you have anything to say, please do leave a comment below. I try to read all my comments and uh, get back to people that have anything interesting to say. So with that all being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.